Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Team Talk Communicado page. My name is Nat Mayotte. I'm the founder of Team Talk via Master Your Authentic Voice. I'm a public speaking coach, and today I am joined by another fantastic coach, author. I want to tell you a little bit about Susanna today because uh, she is not only a public speaking presentation skills expert, she is an executive coach. Recently, an author, I'm going to tell you about that a little bit later, and a speaker. And her main market are business professionals who really want to position themselves as leaders uh, by communicating with more clarity, confidence, and connection. And I love that, Susanna. Uh, through her in-person or virtual training programs, because we know that virtual stuff is popular still, executive coaching, uh, speech coaching, her online learning and keynotes, Susanna shares essential presentation and business communication strategies and techniques that can turn every speaking opportunity into a rewarding and result-driven experience. She has been a returning guest on several media outlets in Canada, so you can find her through her website there. But most recently, actually two big things happened, and one of them, Susanna, you didn't mention it here, that you just released from Nervous to Nailed It, launched in October 2022, which really is focusing on the need for both new and seasoned speakers by providing those tools and guidelines that we all need to help us find our voice, present with impact, and unleash their ultimate speaking potential. And the book did achieve Amazon's bestseller status on the day of the launch. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and it's available on other platforms and ebook, which is fantastic. Uh, but probably what you're most proud of is that you're a mom of a wonderful 12-year-old boy who knows everything, um, a two-year-old bird who eats everything, and a girl who always travels with chocolate. So true. <laughs> Thank you for doing this with me today. And, you know, before we started recording, I was saying that the goal really is I want to share with the listeners that this skill of public speaking has to start early in life. Would you agree? Yes, I would agree. And I, I would agree also that it's easier said than done because mm. of the emotions that we attach to it. Absolutely. And I mean, I was that child who was very shy in school, did not want to go to the front of the class. Um, there was a lot of vomiting. I hate to say it. Uh, is this something you also experienced as a child? No, you know what? I uh, not Not so much the vomiting, <laughs> but I was very quiet, very shy, never liked being in the center of attention because just bad things used to happen. I would get tongue tied. I would get red in the face. I would get too nervous, forget what I wanted to say. It was just embarrassing. So I, yeah. I tried to avoid it altogether. Sometimes I still had to put myself in that position, but, um, it just it, younger, it just never seemed to feel good. And therefore oh. I, I avoided it. Yeah. So how, I mean, I know how I got into the business so quickly. How did you like sort of land in this if if this was the situation? Yeah. So I, I always knew deep down though, that that's, you know, that I can't just say the popular kids, but uh, you know, in school, it was the popular kids who didn't yeah. seem shy and who could speak up. But then as I went on in school and work and so on. It wasn't about the popular kids anymore. It was about the people who were succeeding and the people who weren't afraid of putting themselves out there, speaking mm. up, sharing their voice, sharing their expertise. And I always looked at them with, you know, oh, like, who are these people and how yeah. do they get that courage and that confidence to just, just say it, just talk and speak. And so it was always in the back of my mind that it was a skill I wanted to develop. I had no idea how to because the 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 nerves just were stronger than anything, right? That bad yeah. feeling, the, the nervousness, embarrassment, um, worried about making a mistake and looking stupid. So again, easier said than done until uh, a cousin of mine who was in California, he joined a Toastmaster group and he told me about Toastmasters. And I will tell you that that it sounded great but it took me three years to actually get there. And it was only oh, because yeah. when I started working at a company that I really liked and that I really felt finally, I found a place, I was in marketing at the time, this was back in the corporate days uh, for an IT company. And and even my boss was like, listen, we, we see potential in you, but if you continue to not speak up at the meetings and you always stay quiet, 
we can't we can't do anything with you people need to hear you and you need to take up some space so that actually motivated me to to go to toastmasters but even then i remember the first day i went i i had to stand up and introduce myself and that was enough for like i was like oh i don't think i can even do this again just by introducing myself then i sat through an entire meeting where people gave speeches and i said they're too good yeah. i do not belong here um these people are amazing and so I left and I, I didn't go back. And, but then, you know, the frustration mounted yeah. at work, the frustration mounted and mount, as I continued to watch people speak up, take space. And I continued to hold myself back and shrink into a corner. And I knew that it was the wrong thing to do. And eventually I, I guess I must've, I don't even remember what it was that made me just go, okay, enough, enough. Uh, I'm going to go back to Toastmasters. I'll give it three months. I don't need to, I don't need to commit to to a lifetime. I'll give it three months and see where it takes me. Um, eight years later, it uh, I, I was in for eight years, but somewhere along the way, something about uh, I, I found I found the happy place. I don't know. Yeah. It took me a while, but when people started listening, I I felt very empowered, very supported there also, and 100%. that helped me take chances. It helped me step up a little bit until somewhere along the line the opportunities to speak outside of toastmasters came and nice. i jumped and uh and it just it it found me and it was it was finally the right thing the yeah. the purpose yeah. we were talking about too the the purpose which i think even now i bump into people from high school and they're like i can't believe you're a public speaker yeah. because you just you were always quiet shy didn't talk hung out in the corner and I'm like, no, that's, it's weird how that works. But uh, I wish now I would have known, you know, as I reflect on it, just the time spent being nervous all the time, the time spent convincing myself that I couldn't do it. And the stories yeah. I told myself that held me back. And it was just me holding myself back. It was no one else. And uh, I wish I would have known that earlier and just tried to, you know, push myself earlier to do yeah. it. Well, I, I wish there was a me back then too, because, well, I did 11 years in Toastmasters. Oh, wow. And, okay. Yeah, 11 <laughs> years and realized that for me, it came naturally to to support people in the corporate world. And that's where I was doing it. Um, but my experience with working with kids for over 30 years, I sort of have married this whole thing with Team Talk where I can use that communication and then my experience with kids. So I'm now able to bring the two together. So I like to say that the program is fun and interactive and educational because I just am injecting that. I get it. I totally understand every student. I acknowledge them. And I like to give them the space that it's okay if you only take a small step while we're together, because yeah. that that is what it is. And I just, just finished a program at my daughter's school. And I said to all the students at our little celebration, you all went forward doesn't matter how far forward you went, but you no. all went forward. And it's just about showing up every day and just trying. trying. And I think that, exactly. that, and I think even as adults, that's what we encourage our clients to do is to say, just try, just do a little bit more. Yep. Um, do you think, so I want to, I want to talk, cause I see behind you there, nervous to nail that is there. It is. It's also right here. Right here. It's always nearby. <laughs> always near me. I, I am going to bring a copy back with me when I, I come back from Montreal. But what are some of the highlights that you were striving to achieve in that book? Because I feel like teens could probably, I'm going to assume that a, a teenager could benefit from reading a book like that as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what? It the, there's, a, there's a big piece of it. At, the book starts with an acknowledgement and an understanding that yes, this is hard. We, many of us go through with it, go through it. We are not all born charismatic, uh, confident speakers. And, and ultimately it starts with reassuring people that confidence is not at all what you need to be a good speaker. And, and this is one of the big myths is that I, is, until I feel good, I don't want to get up there in front of an audience. And yeah. it's not really about how you feel because the success of a presentation is not your confidence, your feelings. It's not even your super cool slides and amazing videos. It's what value are you bringing to the audience? And you always, you said, there was, everybody has something to share. As you said, even if it's just a little tidbit, you have something, you have an expertise, you have a talent. 
any part of your personality that just could be shared that will help impact people, help help the world in some way. But I mean, you know, maybe I'm making it too big. It's not about helping the world, help yourself, help the people next to you, help someone else achieve yes. what they need or, or support Absolutely. them in some way. And so it really starts with that acknowledgement that no, we don't need confidence. So let's get rid of that expectation right away. And let's start looking at what we do need to do to create a message that is meaningful to an audience where we can yes. kind of shift our, our headspace away from how you feel and what you think you need to be a speaker. Yeah. And instead just, again, baby steps, move forward. What What's one thing you can do to add to a presentation to step up to say something differently that will make a difference to the people listening to you and when we start talking about it with that mindset shift yeah. give people permission to be nervous but it doesn't yes. have to stop you from doing it anyways we get, okay i'm nervous and and you know i tell this to my clients that many many times they come to me and not all of them come with the nervous issue or i need more confidence but I'll acknowledge, I'll say, okay, got it. You feel nervous, acknowledged. We're just gonna park that for now. Yeah. And now let's look, we'll come back to it. It's real, it's there, right? But we'll come back to it, but let's focus on your message. Let's focus on what you're trying to say, what you want the audience to walk away with, really understanding how to position the message. And when it comes time to deliver it, well then we'll talk about your your nerves then. But if you if you can create a message that is, strong and structure strong and focused that is engaging and relevant to the audience then mm, th then you yeah. will probably feel more confident delivering it yeah i'm always yeah. um harping on my students about making it relatable especially at their age right so it's more about yeah. relatability what the message is um and then the techniques are kind of like that other that other part you know of of putting you know putting structure into it and how to use your hands and you know, those are the things they seem to be more um, worried about. I'm always impressing on them that you have something important to say. What is it you're going to say? And most of the time I encourage them because in schools, often they are assigned presentations on topics that they just are foreign. You know, I don't ask them to talk about Queen Elizabeth back in the 18th century and her reign and how it impacted, you know. I'm saying pick a topic that you love and you're passionate about and you can share with us an experience because when we talk about things that we love, isn't it so much easier? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that too, that whole idea of ease. Um, and then, like you said, if you have to tackle something that's not in your scope, then at least you have some kind of direction and how can you bring that. So I love that the relatability for me, especially with the audience. Um, yeah. What are your, you know, I mean, I know you have tons of tips. What kind of <laughs> tips, right what kind of tips do you have? Like what, what, you know, I, I see my students as future leaders. So mm -hmm. I'm always thinking of them, like, how can, how are you presenting yourself? How are you speaking? Is it clear? Are you articulating? Is your message on point? Um, mm -hmm. What are some of the things that they should be looking out for if they're, you know, going into those leadership roles? Yeah, well, that's a it's a great question. I mean, again, a lot of it's covered in the book, um, <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, but there, are, you know, what number one I think is is just the decision to, um, you know, people have said it to me over the years: get out of your own way. Yeah. Right. Stop. Stop making up excuses why you shan't, why you shouldn't, or can't, or why you need more time, or what. Just sometimes it's a matter of just making that decision and then and then going for it. And and that sort of shifts when you shift out of the indecision. That's one thing. Uh, one one powerful piece. Um, I I really harp on the relevance piece. Also, really understand yeah. your audience. Who are they? What issues are yeah. they dealing? with that you can now add a little bit of value add a little bit of impact change their life give some kind of a suggestion in you know a clear focused way so my pieces are all about how do you structure a presentation that's always been like that's where my my business sort of yeah. starts and ends is the structure piece because we are often you know we're given a topic and we want to say everything 
So uh -huh. everything and, uh, you know, you find all this information and you got to present it all, but presenting too much information is sometimes overwhelming to an audience Absolutely. doesn't even give you enough time to cover anything in any great detail. So it's about creating the structure and the focus. What are the yeah. key points that you want to get through? What is the action you want your audience to take afterwards? What, what do you want yeah. them to learn? What do oh, you want yeah. Them to feel? What do you want? I them harp to on that too. Exactly. And that, that's I harp on it too. Yeah, it's good to know otherwise. I'm not the only one harping. You're not the only one harping. <laughs> you know, the big I love thing it. for me is, is, you know, keep asking yourself why, why is this important? Yeah. Why is it relevant to them? Why should they care about this message? And, you know, it used to be the what's in it for me message. I don't think mm. that's, I just, I rewrite it a little bit. It's more like, why should they care about what you're talking about? Because, and you have yeah. to be clear on that through like from start to finish. Yeah, and if absolutely. You can necessarily be, be clear on it yourself, then, then you, you shouldn't move forward or not. You shouldn't move forward. You should just, just reevaluate. Exactly. You know, there yeah. was one great piece of advice I once got, uh, a few years ago from another speaking colleague, because we were talking about storytelling and the value of sharing stories to make things more relatable and to help connect with people. And yeah. sometimes I got into this phase where, Oh, I have this great story. So I'm going to build a presentation and uh, like just cram the story in there. Uh, but then I would struggle because the story didn't always fit. And I was like, yeah. how can I change the content to meet the story? Which then I learned was absolutely the wrong thing to do. And the piece of advice she gave me was you have to audition your stories into your yeah. presentation. And if it doesn't work, pull them out, put them somewhere else. They'll, they'll fit somewhere else, but it's, you know, so whether it's stories or whether it's content, sometimes yeah. there are things we want to say, but it just doesn't fit the structure. It doesn't fit 100%, the, the yeah. content and it doesn't go with the flow. And so audition it and just be ruthless, be unemotional, right? Oh, you know what? That doesn't fit out. It goes, it'll, yeah. it'll find its way somewhere else. But, but really with the, the main focus being the audience, how can I deliver the most value to this audience in the time I have? with yeah. this message. So if you're looking for that structure and you're looking for a great story and trying to put all of that together and you think that you might need some help, Susanna is the gal for you. Uh, how, what's the best way to reach out to Susanna? Uh, well, my, my website is, uh, I think it's my, yeah. my name, susannabaum.com. You huh. can also go to nervous to nailed it.com. Um, because that that website has all the information on the book, the ebook, where to get them, audiobook coming soon, read by me. So um, a lot of exciting things happening around the book. That's but, amazing. Uh, yeah, feel free to reach out. Find me on uh, all the all the grams, the Instagram, the grams. The Facebooks, and the Twitters, and all of that, and I LinkedIn. It. And I will uh, I will answer your email very quickly. Awesome. And if you uh, you do have a teen or maybe you're a teacher and you're catching this and you would love this skill um, exploited to your students, you need to talk to me. So my name's Nat Mayot. You can message me at Mayot, M-A-I-L-H-O-T, Nat at gmail.com. And I will get back to you at ASAP um, with a program that suits your students for your curriculum. Whatever you choose to do, folks, I hope you have a great day, Susanna. Thank you so much for doing this with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for inviting me, Natalie. Okay. Bye. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>